Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there, calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. The word of the Lord. Please stand and say today's psalm found in your Sunday bulletin. Lord, you have searched me out and know me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You trace my journeys and my resting places. You are acquainted with all my ways. Indeed, there is not a word on my lips, but you, O oh Lord, know it all together. You press upon me my mind and before. You lay your hands upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain it. For you set out creating my animal's parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I will thank you because I am marvelously made. Your works are wonderful, and I know it well. My body was not hidden from you, while I was being made in secret and woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes beheld my limbs, yet I was finished in the womb. All of them were written in your book. They are fashioned day by day, and the men that are with my hands. How deep I find your thoughts, O God! How great is the sum of them! If I were to count them, they would be more in number than sand. To count them all, my life span would need to be like yours. Please be seated for the reading of the epistle. <coughs> A reading from 1 Corinthians. All things are lawful for me, but not all things are beneficial. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be dominated by anything. Food is meant for the stomach and the stomach for food, and God will destroy both one and the other. The body is not meant for fornication, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. And God raised the Lord and will also raise us by his power. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Should I therefore take the members of Christ and make them members of a prostitute? Never. Do you not know that whoever is united to a prostitute becomes one body with her? For it is said the two shall, become, shall be one flesh. But anyone united to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. Shun fornication. Every sin that a person commits is outside the body but the fornicator sins against the body itself? Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, which you have from God, and that you are not your own? For you were bought with a price. Therefore, glorify, glorify God in your body. The word of the Lord. Thank you, God. The sequence hymn is hymn 542.
gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, according to St. John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee, and he found Philip, and said to him, Follow me. Now, Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael, and said to him, We have found him about whom Moses and the law, and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. And Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? And Philip said to him, Come, see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said of him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. And Nathanael asked him, Where did you get to know me? And Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. And Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under a fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly, I tell you, you will see heaven open and the angels of God descending and descending upon the Son of Man. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Pray to you, Lord Christ. Dear Lord, open to us the gates of heaven. Shine your light deep within us. Help us to move forward and hear your call. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. I love, I just love uh, today's reading from the Hebrew Scriptures. I will never, the call to Samuel, the young man Samuel, I'll never forget uh, the first time I really, really heard it. Although I'd gone to church all my life, I was in seminary uh, my first year, and one of the upperclassmen there, um, a guy who I really respected, this guy was a partner uh, at Kidder Peabody on Wall Street in the uh, early 1980s. He was a partner. He used to, at lunch hour, he'd teach all the high-powered execs how to play bridge and how to play backgammon. This guy was a master pointer, and he had this booming voice, and, and he had a great education. And he quit. He quit, you know, what everybody would consider these days, you know, having it all. Because he heard God's call to go and serve, and he, he just quit. And he went to seminary. And uh, as it turns out, he heard the call even more. And he was way too smart to be a priest in a parish. So what he did was um, he got his counseling degree, advanced degree after that. And he's been running uh, clinics for heroin addicts in Phoenix, Arizona for the last 30 years. He heard the call. But I'll never forget when he read that reading, Samuel, Samuel. Mm -hmm. I'll never forget uh, you know, what that call meant. I'm inspired by that reading today. It's encouraging to know that you don't always have to get it the first time with God. Samuel missed several cues, didn't he, in that story. God's invitations to become a partner in faith, you know, at least three times just in that reading. But finally, you know, I guess the fourth call was a charm, and he responded the way I hope, you know, when we hear it, you know it when you hear it, you'll be able to say, here I am, Lord. You know, your servant hears. But you see, you and I are here to be servants of God on this earth. That's what, we're, that's what we're born for, to care for the world and to care for each other. It's not about looking out for number one, my friends. That's not what life is about. It's about caring for each other and this world. It means also that God is going to keep calling and calling in different ways and nudging us until we're finally able to hear and say, here I am. Send me, let me help, let me help. Now, as for today's epistle from 1 Corinthians, where this talk about prostitutes and fornication, I'm, I'm not preaching about that today. I'm not touching that, except, except to say, just say no to that stuff, all right? You know, and to focus on what Paul's point really was, the, you know, the theological point of that. By the way, Corinth was a notorious seaport, so you know why he's talking to, he's talking to sailors. But at any rate, his point was that our bodies, your body, is a temple for God. 
places where God gets to dwell inside and work the good works in this world. So treat yourself with some respect and treat the people you love and their bodies as well with deep respect and care and tenderness. Hmm? That's what this is all about. Take good care of that temple of God. Now back to the subject I want to preach about today which is about Samuel, you know, because um, the gospel today of Christ, it, it amplifies that, that whole thing about calling. It's clear, and, um, you know, it's nice. We had a nice Christmas and all that kind of stuff, but now we can put Christmas in the rearview mirror, and we can put the, the, the birth narratives and away in the manger, away for a time, and get to the point of why the man was born, why Christ came to this world in the first place. He was born, came to this world, so that he might fulfill God's calling and might invite us to do likewise. Today we heard about Jesus uh, beginning to invite other people, his first uh, disciples, to share in the calling of God with him. So he reaches out to Philip and he says, follow me. And, and Philip just did. He just plain did. And then Philip did what is our call to do, which is to invite our friends, his friend Nathaniel in this case, uh, you know, to meet Christ as well in his life. And of course, Nathaniel uh, answers a little differently than Philip. He says, are you kidding me? Can anything good come out of a dump like Nazareth? I mean, that's, that's, what that, that's what that was about. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? So Nathaniel, he was less than sure. Um, Nazareth was not exactly a center of the culture and high learning at the time. The great teachers and the prophets were all expected to come, you know, from Jerusalem and from the right school of thought and learning from the correct rabbi, but not a place like Nazareth. And yet I cannot help but think on this Martin Luther King National Holiday that about 60 years ago this time, a lot of people were wondering and uh, a lot grumbling if anything good could ever come out of a place like Montgomery, Alabama. Right, where this young preacher, Martin Luther King, uh, sided with and advocated for people like Rosa Parks and oppressed black people in particular at that time, or if anything good could have come out of his Christian witness in Birmingham or Selma, where his stance on peace and justice for all people, the poor and the marginalized included, and his critique, and this is what really got him in trouble in the end, his critique of any nation that does not care for its poor and its needy as its first priority, above national defense, that does not care for its own poor and needy, is a nation on the verge of spiritual death. He said that. Well, that led to his family's home being bombed by some nice Christian people in town. Uh, he was stabbed on one occasion in a crowd, and he was under constant death threats over and over. Can anything good come from responding to God's call to witness to the way of love, no matter what the cost, and the social justice to active, faithful nonviolence, the way Jesus himself taught and modeled? Well, King wrote one night after receiving a particularly vicious, threatening phone message that he just broke down and he wept at his, kitchen, at his own kitchen table. He broke down and wept. And in that flood of tears that night, he said that was when he sensed more strongly than any other time in his life God. He sensed God with him saying, Martin Luther, Martin Luther, stand up for justice. Hmm? I will never leave you. No, never alone. You've heard of his mountaintop speech. I've been to the mountaintop. Well, he was referring to that night at the, in that veil of tears at his kitchen table, the night he knew that God was telling him to stand up for justice because he'd never, ever be alone. Recall then that centuries earlier, God called Samuel the same way. Samuel, Samuel. That's another thing I love about our God. God knows you. God knows your name, and God cares and wants to, wants to encourage every one of us to witness for the good in ways small and big as we are called, as we are called. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Absolutely. And out of Montgomery, and out of Selma, and out of Birmingham, too. And I pray that good comes out of us from this day on, and out of our town, and out of our nation, more and more informed by the spirituality and the power of God in Christ. And certainly Nathaniel, he did come uh, to see great things come about as Jesus and the disciples reached out to the, to the unreachable and the untouchable, 
the poor and the sick and the grieving and the blind and the doubters and the rich and the powerful and the marginalized and the seekers of his day over the span of his earthly witness. So can anything good come from it all? Yes. How about things like the way of learning how to forgive yourself and each other and reconciliation with those with whom we struggle and, and a way of dealing with our conflict, and there is conflict, non-violently. How about greater hope for the women and children of the earth, which is still uh, has a long way to go in most of this world? How about inspiration to build a more just and sustainable world before we either deplete its natural resources because we just want and want and want, or before we blow ourselves to kingdom come hmm, with the great weapons of mass destruction that we, that we spend $10 million a minute? That's our priority in our nation right now to maintain. I reckon that nothing but good comes from answering God's invitation to partnership in faith and faithful action. And I assure you that as we do heed God's call, you and the world are going to be better for it. Uh, the good will come to it. Maybe not right away, but down the line for sure. Down the line for sure. Yes, we will overcome. Yes, we'll walk hand in hand. Deep in my heart I do believe. Hmm? Here I am. Send me your servant here. Will you say that? Can you say that? So I'm going to invite you. Uh, we're going to stop for a moment in, uh, in a warm church on a nice Sunday while there's incense and bacon in the air. Mm -hmm. you know, and, uh, and blessed as we are uh, in a silence of grace and just internally say to yourself, if you will, three times, here I am, Lord. Send me. The servant hears. Here I am, Lord. Send me. Your servant hears. Here I am, Lord. Send me. Your servant hears. How I love the knowledge that God keeps on calling, even if we miss a nudge or two along the way. God keeps calling and God will get through. So indeed, Lord, send us forth into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness. With gladness and singleness of heart. Amen. We now stand to affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed found on page 358 of the Book of Common Prayer. We believe in one God, the Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, the Trinity of God the Father, God of God, light of light. True God and true God, the God is not made, but one being with the Father, who is in him all things are made. For our, for our salvation, we came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, we became in the of the Virgin Mary, and was made again. For our sake, he was crucified for the Pontius Pilate, who suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in the form of the Scripture.
remembering especially Catherine, our presiding bishop, Rob, our bishop, and in the diocesan cycle of prayer, St. Stephen's Church, Pittsfield, where Bishop Hirschfeld is visiting this morning with the Reverend Curtis Metzger, rector. Grant, almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, remembering especially the, and praying for the safety and speedy return of those deployed in the armed services and for comfort for their families, for all who pray for peace <coughs> worldwide, and for assurance and blessing to those looking for work and for their families that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, bless all those whose lives are closely linked with ours, especially those for whom our prayers for healing and encouragement are asked today. John, Janice, Jack, Leo, Anne, Dick, John, Debbie, Russell, Noel, Bradley, Ray, Chris, Skyler, Judith Ann, Cynthia, Sandra, Lee, and Aaron, for all of us who struggle with alcohol or drug abuse or love someone who does, and for healing within ourselves and for those in our thoughts and hearts today. Grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We pray today for all known to us who celebrate birthdays this week, including Burke Clagg, Sophie Bourgeois, Allison Marks, Chris Calhoun, Joshua DeRocher, Ginny Hill, David Neiman, Pauline Kroller, Pat Sewell, and Tony Moore. For those known to us celebrating anniversaries this week, including Steve and Jody Ducharme. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. We commend to your mercy all who have died, remembering especially Jerry Isakoff, Paula Paradis Warrior, and, and Val Packard, to whom the flowers on the altar today are given in loving memory. That your will for them may be fulfilled, and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O Lord, our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercy, be swiftly compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Please turn down to page 360 in the Book of Common Prayer. On page 360. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, by what we have done. We have not loved you with our whole heart, we have not loved our neighbor as ourselves. We are to be sorry and to humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us. For we may abide in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. 
forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ and strengthen us in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep us in eternal life. Amen. Amen.
together in the great thanksgiving. The Eucharistic prayer is on page 367 in the Book of Common Prayer. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life, and you made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. Alleluia.
communion prayer is found on page 365 of the Book of Common Prayer. <clears throat> Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through christ our lord amen and now we go forth into the world in peace be strong and of good courage hold fast to that which is good rejoicing in the power of god's spirit and may the blessing of god almighty the father the son and the holy spirit be among us now and remain with us always Amen. The recessional is in 543. 543.